Today we're going to be talking about ternary ionic compounds. And the ternary and uh, ternary ionic compounds means that I'm going to have three or more elements present inside of my ionic compound. And what this means is that I'm going to have one of my ions be a polyatomic ion. Poly in this case means many, so polyatomic ions are going to be ions that contain many different atoms, generally two, but there are some polyatomic ions that contain three uh, different elements. So uh, generally what polyatomic ions are, are they are going to be our uh, group of nonmetals that are going to form ionic compounds as a single unit. So inside of our star reference chart, we have a list of polyatomic ions. And if we look at all of our polyatomic ions in general, they are going to be a group of nonmetals, and they are going to have a singular charge. Um, also, what you may have noticed on uh, my polyatomic ion sheet is that they typically end in either eight or eight, meaning that their suffix or their ending is eight or eight. So you can see uh, carbonate, chlorate, uh, chlorite, You'll also notice sometimes that they don't follow this rule, but those are going to be very easy to figure out which ones are not going to follow that rule. So the two that are most common are going to be ammonium and cyanide. And since those are really uh, the ones that you're going to see a lot of that don't follow this general rule, they're going to be easier to recognize and figure out what's happening. So with uh, my polyatomic ions, I have a sp specific example here. And uh, this specific example is phosphate. So phosphate has one phosphorus and four oxygens bonded together. Now they are going to form similar, uh, something similar to a ride or die group. They are going to stick together no matter what. And no matter what, they will always have this many of each atom and they will have this charge together, which makes them easy to actually figure out the uh, charges and subscripts because they're going to stay together. Now with phosphate, since we have a subscript here already, um, we need to be mindful of that when we are forming compounds and using polyatomics inside of those compounds. So we're still going to be exchanging those charges for subscripts. We're still gonna be able to use that shortcut there. The thing that we have to be careful of is we cannot change the species subscript, meaning that phosphate has to stick together. There is one phosphorus and there are four oxygens. That has to be true for that to be phosphate. So we cannot change the species subscript. Instead, if we are going to have to have multiple of a particular polyatomic ion, we are going to have to protect that polyatomic ion's ratios using parentheses, and that will help us to be able to identify that uh, that particular ion is staying together and we are not uh, breaking it apart. So an example here is going to be sodium phosphate. I think that ternary ionics are one of the easiest things uh, to name and to go from formula to name because of those polyatomic ions they are actually incredibly helpful. So sodium, because it is on the periodic table, I have to go to the periodic table. I have to find sodium. I have to figure out what column it's in, and then I have to figure out its charge from there. So sodium is in column one, which means it has one valence electron, which means it's going to give up that one valence electron rather than fight to try to steal seven to get to a full octet. On the other hand, phosphate, I don't have to do any of that kind of mental gymnastics. I don't have to think about it. All I have to do is flip inside of my periodic table. I have to find phosphate and that's it. I always know that phosphate is always going to be this. No thinking involved, just write down who phosphate is and who sodium is. Now here I have uh, sodium again with that plus one charge and then phosphate we found that inside of our periodic table on that polyatomic ion list and phosphate is going to be PO4 three minus. Now when I exchange charges for subscripts, I am going to uh, give that one from sodium to phosphate. We do not write ones. The presence of PO4 is in itself a denotation that there is at least one phosphate. Since they function as a singular unit, they do not need that one. They are implied 
whereas the phosphate uh, charge of three will become sodium subscript of three. Now we have, uh, this is an example where I do not need uh, parentheses, where I have just a singular phosphate that is necessary. Um, but I am going to go ahead and show you what it would look like if I did need multiple phosphates. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to find beryllium. Beryllium is going to be on the periodic table. It is in column two, which means that I'm going to have two valence electrons, which means I'm going to give away those two valence electrons rather than steal six to complete my octet. Since I'm giving away two valence electrons, my charge will be positive two. Now phosphate, again, is going to stay the same. I don't have to think about it. I know who phosphate is. I just have to write phosphate down. Now this time, my charge from beryllium is more than one, which means I have to have more than one phosphate. So when I do that, I will write it in parentheses like this. If I did not have these parentheses, it would look like I had either 42 phosphate or 42 oxygens and one phosphorus or some other mix up where I'm not actually denoting that I have only one phosphate present because phosphate forms as a singular compound. So I have to denote that this bubble, this phosphate functions as a singular thing. And beryllium, of course, is going to get phosphates three. Remember, especially with polyatomics, since we have multiple numbers here, it can be easy to mess this up. So be very careful that you are taking phosphate's charge, not phosphate subscript. I don't care what phosphate subscript is. That gives me absolutely no information for what beryllium is going to be. It has to be phosphate's charge. Now for nomenclature for polyatomics, it's actually going to be really easy. Both my cation and my anion get to keep their name. Phosphate is already uh, this ion's anion name, so I do not need to change it. And so all I get to do is just find my cation. If it's a transition metal cation, then I will figure out its oxidative state and I'll add that information in. And then I will just find my polyatomic and just state it as it is.